Take a look at this, okay? Now, he's threatening to burn the place down, okay? Now, here it comes. This is what he keeps repeating. What the hell is that? A maniac. Now, he's in this building, and he's going to try and burn it down. Who is Andy Moore? What the hell do I know? I'm the maniac, baby. Look, try and find him, will you? Lieutenant, I think I got him. I'm talking to you from City Hall, where a young man, Andy Moore, demanding the identity of his actual parents, has been arrested for disrupting the Hall of Records. Moore, the brilliant young creative director of Titan Toys, just this year became one of the richest young executives in America. None of it is worth it, Moore was quoted as saying, if I don't know who I am. He isn't getting anywhere. That's good. Are you sure? Father Dowling, your parish account is overdrawn. Well, according to my records, though, we should be just fine. Here, see for yourself. Yeah. <sighs> Father, you haven't filled in all the stubs. Hmm? Oh, you know, you're right. <laughs> that certainly would account for the missing money, wouldn't it? When you write a check, Father, you have to fill in the stub. Oh, that's good advice. Oh, uh, about these overdrafts? You think you could cover them for me? Temporarily, of course. Father, an habitually overdrawn account is a very serious problem. Uh, would you excuse me for just a minute, please? Uh, pardon me. Yes, Father? I, uh... I think there's a man online who intends to rob the bank. What? Who? Fourth one in line. I noticed him when he came in, and he didn't fill out that withdrawal slip. Well, some people, Father, like for the teller to fill it out for them. I'll keep an eye on him, Father. Thanks just the same. Hey. Look, see, he's keeping his hand in his pocket, and he's got something very heavy in there. Could be anything. There you see. He keeps patting it back in place. I really think you should try and stop him. 
Hold it! Hold it right there! Very nicely done. Now, about those checks I've written... How did you know? He looked like anyone. Oh, well, you know, detective stories are my passion, and I suppose that's why I have this odd way of looking at things. But about those checks... Father, darling, don't give it a second thought. The bank will be happy to honor the checks, and you'll make it up as soon as you can. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you so much. Good day. Together, we're going to organize that bus tour, Mr. Farnsworth. All right? So you take care of yourself now. Be careful. How'd it go at the bank? We're overdrawn. How did it go at the soccer game? We're overmatched. <laughs> you know, if we don't get a decent goalie by next week, we might as well cancel the game. You know what Father Farina over at St. John's does? What? His goalie's a ringer. We, now, we don't know that. We do know that. He's an upperclassman from public school. Steve, we can't cheat no matter who else does. The important thing is how you play the game. Well, that's fine as long as we win. Sister Stephanie, I do not hold lunch. Oh, yes, Marie. I, I'm sorry. It just took longer at the bank than I anticipated. Father Honecker was always on time for everything. You could set your watch by him. Well, I'm off. You may find something in the icebox. Beam her up, Lord. Charity, Steve. If Marie prefers my predecessor, that's her right. Father Hanukkah died 15 years ago. Well, some people take longer to adjust than others. <laughs> Lord knows she may be right. You can hardly set your calendar by me. Tonight's a Columbus dinner tonight, don't forget. Oh, really? Tonight is it? Yep. And it's a fundraiser, Frank. You gotta get in there and make them give you money. I hate raising money, and I do it so badly. Well, you just gotta do it. I mean, the bishop's not gonna give us any more. And what are we supposed to cut? Soccer? Senior citizen outings? Yeah, I know, I know. I'll do it. It's just that... St. Michael's Rectory. Yeah, he is. Hold on. It's the cops. The police. The cops. Father Dowling here. Yes? Andy Moore. Yes, I know who he is. Wants to talk to me? He what? Oh, good Lord. I'll be right there. Steve, you have to drive me. What's up? Young fellow named Andy Moore. He came to see me last year. So what about him? He's out on a ledge. He's threatening to kill himself. Well, in that case, we better get there fast. Steve! Frank, we're here, Frank. An unqualified miracle. 
On my list of things to do, I must put learn to drive at the top. My father, Dolly. Over here, Father. Now, could everyone move back, please? He's very nervous. So am I. Oh, dear. Father Dowling. You wanted to talk to me, Andy? I mean, most people just call me on the phone or drop by the rectory. My real parents are out there somewhere, Father. Let them come forward, or they lose a son. Uh, now, Andy, you don't mean that. Now, come on inside. I'm freezing. I'm not going back in there. No, for heavens, don't do that. Oh, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. I'll go when I'm ready. You're not supposed to go until God's ready. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to lecture you. It's just that Father. I've never done this, and I'm, I'm not used to this. Well, just relax. Now, now, take it easy. Take a deep breath. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What about you? Me? Who am I? I I'm not Andy Moore. I don't know who I am. Your adoptive parents loved you, Andy. But they're dead. I want my real parents. If I don't get them, I don't care about myself. That's the truth, Father. If you knew anything, you'd... No, 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 look. Look, I, I, I promise you that we'll get the word out to everybody that was on the parish rolls 22 years ago, and I'll work with you until we find your parents. If we don't? I'll give it a try, son. I, I don't know. Give me a chance to help you. Look, Frank. Who was that? What, what was that? Uh, don't you move. I'll be right back. We're rigging the net, stall in five minutes. Oh, no. Please, God, no. I let him go, Steve. I had him, and I let him go. I'm trying to put in a good word for a recent transfer, an unauthorized transfer. Why don't you go into dinner? I have to be alone here for a while. I remember when I get really down on myself, that's when I get into trouble. Big trouble. You got me out all that, Frank. You saved me. And I'm gonna say to you the magic words that you used on me, all right? You are not a failure. Huh. I was today. Oh, Steve, I had him. I was turning him, and I looked away. No, oh, Frank, he was going. That's why he was even out on that ledge. He just couldn't do it with you looking at him, that's all. Well, sooner or later, you were gonna have to turn around. And the guy decided it was time to go. I just can't believe it. Maybe I don't wanna believe it. Come on. Marie is gonna throw dinner away, you know. Afterwards, you can brood all you want, all right? You're very tough, Sister Stephanie. Don't you forget it, Father Frank. <laughs> Is it all right if I turn on the TV? The 
Dow Jones Industrial Average broke new ground today, news. rising 32 points to end the day at 22.36. In local news, since Senator Paul Erdane announced his hearing into gangland activity, two key witnesses have mysteriously died in fatal accidents. Senator Erdane is still optimistic, however, that these hearings will be productive. We have already issued subpoenas to several witnesses who expressed their willingness to testify, and this is really the first step in this state uh, to move against organized crime. Now, that's all I can say at the moment. In other news, tragedy struck downtown this afternoon at the home office of no, the no, Titan Steve, Toy leave Company. Twenty-two-year-old Andrew this. Moore, a young millionaire entrepreneur who would seem to have had everything to live for, today climaxed a fruitless year-long search for his natural parents with a bizarre challenge for them to come forward that ended in his own death. For over an hour, more threatening. Frank, are you sure you want to watch this? Story ledge, I can't hide from it. Moore's parish priest, Father Frank Dowling of St. Michael's Roman Catholic Church in this city. As anxious onlookers watched at 3:20 this Don't look away. Moore plunged to his death. That's enough. Frank, you don't have to look at this. You really don't. Frank, what is it? I'm not sure. I don't know how it happened, Father. She asked me to drive her home, invited me in for a drink. It, it would kill my wife if she found out. I'll, I'll never do it again. I believe you, my son. Do five Hail Marys, six Our Fathers, and an act of contrition. And get a new secretary. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. How long since your last confession, my child? A very long time, Father. And what is your confession? I have to know. What did Andy Moore say to you before his death? Why do you ask? I have to know, please. If you want to talk to me about this, it would be more appropriate in my office. Don't you agree? Sister. Why not, Fred? Steve? <laughs> Is that you? That's right. You gave up shop with me. I gave up a lot of things. So listen, is it all right if we park here? Sure. Thanks. Why the sorting of the friends you have? Uh-uh. You better wait here. better. Who was the victim? Oh, well, that's just some local hood. Somebody shot him? Well, actually, it was probably just an accident. What are you doing here, Frank? It's about this afternoon. Now, listen, Frank, I want you to forget it. I mean, you did everything that you could. No, no. There are a couple of things that bother me. First, I don't really believe he wanted to jump. And I saw the footage on TV. He flinched as though we were hit by something. And he didn't actually jump. He sort of dropped like, like he was shot. Uncle Frank, I read the medical examiner's report on him. There, there were no drugs in him, no foreign objects, no bullets. There's just a whole lot of trauma from hitting that pavement going a couple hundred miles an hour. What if a bullet passed through his body? It could still be lodged in that building, or there could be a mark. Frank, please. Well, can't you just send a couple of men out there to check out the place? No, I can't. You know, Phil, 
When your poor mother, God rest her soul, was passing over, I promised her that I would look after you. Oh, no, you don't. No, no, Margaret, no, 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 no. I said if Phil ever needs anything. You're not going to do this to me. doesn't even have to ask. Please, don't do this. So, not, when you no, needed no, help on the Nelson work. case, I was there. And when you got stuck in the Vernon killing, I was and there. Uncle Frank, now don't misunderstand me on this. I'm grateful. And, and yes, you actually have been helpful from time to time. It's been my privilege. But two things. Number one, I can't spare the men to go on some kind of a wild goose chase right now. And number two, mother was in a coma for two months before she passed away. And the doctor told me that she never said a word to anyone. It was in her eyes, Phil. Dispatch to Unit 12. Unit 12, Phil, you out there? Yeah, Jerry. Oh, we've got a negative on this one. OK, thank you, Jerry. No bullets in this one, either. charge here. I am, Senator. Sergeant Keegan. What happened? Uh, it appears the victim lost control of his vehicle. Are you telling me that was an accident? Well, it certainly seems so, yes. You know who was in that car? Yes, sir, Eddie Lacarno. Lacarno, one of my prime witnesses. He was supposed to testify tomorrow morning at the hearing. I certainly wouldn't rule out the possibility of foul play. But who are you? Thank you. I'm Father Frank Dowling, Senator, from St. Michael's, your old parish. My uncle here is something of an amateur detective. Why do you say that, Father? Well, it just seems curious. Deserted street. Judging from the impact, I'd say he was going at a pretty high rate of speed when he hit that pole. So? So, no skid marks. If it was, say, a, a heart attack, he would have instinctively hit the brakes. Don't you think? I think you should stop playing detective. Father well, may have something there. You better make sure you cover all the bases, Sergeant. Well, that is the plan. I... Excuse me? Uh, Father? Didn't I just see you on the uh, television news? That fellow uh, jumped? I'm afraid so. Uh, I'm not so sure that was an accident either. Really? Why do you say that? Well, it's a lot like this one. It, it just doesn't feel right. I can't prove anything yet. Well, if you find there's a connection between the two, you'd be sure to let me know. Good night, Father. Oh, Senator, there, there is something I do have to ask you. Yes. Well, I know this is a little awkward, but uh, the parish has fallen on hard times financially. Ah, uh, yes. Well, now, if you're fundraising, Father, you feel free to use my name and give my regards to Father Hunnicker. I'll try. I call. Four nines. Eat your heart out. I thought gambling was illegal. Yeah, but it's open season on pigeons. Get her out of here, Father. She's a public nuisance. Give it back. It's a donation. So how'd it go? Phil says he can't spare any men. That old line about his mother didn't work, huh? No. I wonder why. We can't see from here. Somebody's got to go out there and look. I'll try and get the building window washer. Excuse me, could you possibly get me the building window washer? Oh, uh, we don't have one. We arrange for man every two weeks. Would you like me to call maintenance? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. We'll be in here. I don't see a thing, Frank. Steve, what are you doing? I'm looking for a mark or something. That's a very bad idea. Whoop. Steve. No problem. No problem. No problem. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, you startled me. I'm Charles Robinson, Andy's partner in this outfit. I'm Father Frank Dowling. My wife, Teresa. How do you do? It must have been awful. Yes, it was. I understand you two were out of town. On vacation in Canada. We came back the moment we heard. Poor Andy. He's been obsessive on the subject, but I never dreamed he'd actually do something like this. When is the service? Uh, Thursday. Did you happen to know anyone who might want to kill Andy? What? Well, if it wasn't an accident, strictly speaking. What are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting. I'm just wondering. Is that so? Hey, Frank, it's freezing out there. 
Uh, this is Sister Stephanie and Mr. and Mrs. Robinson. How you doing? I was just checking. Yeah, if uh, you'll excuse us, uh, we're just making our rounds. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Robinson, are you Catholic? Lapsed. Oh, I thought maybe I might have bumped into you in the church. Unlikely. Find anything out there? No, sorry. Huh? We're just gonna have to keep on looking. Father Darling? Yes? Police. Let's go. Go where? Sister? I think I should get my brakes checked. special visitor that I promised you. Uh, this is the priest from my old parish, Father Frank Dowling. I had to use my police protection to hustle him on down here. He's notoriously shy about asking for contributions. Father Dowling, some of my classmates from Notre Dame, whom I'm sure will open up their hearts and their checkbooks to you. <laughs> here, 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 here. <laughs> uh, Father? You didn't collect any contributions. Oh, I know, I know, but... Well, they were all having such a good time, and I suppose my heart just isn't in it right now. Yeah, that Andy Moore business. How's that going? Stag party over? Oh, Patricia. This is uh, Father Frank Dowling. It's my daughter, Patricia. My pleasure. Good evening, Father. Uh, Father Dowling is from St. Michael's. Excuse me. Ever been to St. Michael's, Mr. Dane? Not since I was a child. Oh, well, perhaps you and your father will come to a Sunday service one day. The senator only attends church at election time. Oh. What about you? I'm just a poor little rich girl. I do whatever pleases my daddy. You live here? When I'm between marriages. Since my mother's death, the senator likes having someone on his arm at public occasions. Sort of a live-in hood ornament. Are you a confirmed cynic, Miss Erdane? Ask anyone. It's been my experience. When you scratch a cynic, you'll find a romantic underneath. People don't try that with me, Father. 
I scratch back. Uh, that was my office. I have to go down and work on some depositions they've just taken. Can I give you a lift? Oh, that would be nice. Good night. Oh, do you have any children, Miss Dane? No, why? I've read so much about you over the years, I just couldn't remember, that's all. Good night. Thanks for the evening, Senator. Don't mention it, Father. My pleasure. You should go back to the convent and sleep in your own bed. Kind of like it here. Sort of reminds me of my favorite time at home, you know? Right after my father had passed out, my mother had finished cleaning up the plate she broke over his head. Just before the cops came looking for my brother. place for one person to keep up. I used to tell Father Hunnicker that all the time. He was very understanding. Well, I hope I'm understanding, too. Of course, I have been distracted lately by this terrible death to poor Andy Moore. Well, I can finish up in here later. Oh, no, no, don't rush off. You know, you and I have so little chance to just sit down and talk together. You have your work, and I always seem to be running to catch up with myself. Come, I got a little surprise for you. Oh. Oh. Here. I shouldn't. We'll drink to Father Honecker. Oh. Sit down, please. Honestly, if you weren't here, Marie, I just don't know how we'd get along. Your knowledge of the parish is really the only thing between us and chaos. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Oh, yes. I'm not really that important. I don't know if I ever told you this, but just before Father Honecker passed away, he said to me, Frank, if you ever need anything at all, ask Marie. Why, she'll give you her right arm if you need it. Did he really say that? Oh, you should have seen the look in his eyes. The man was a saint. Well, he was certainly right about you. You know everything about the parish. I bet you even remember the Andy Moore adoption, and that was, oh my, 22 years ago. Of course I do. The amazing thing about that was the secrecy. Oh, really? Father Honecker even kept that a secret from me. So you don't know who the real parents were either? They should be found, shouldn't they? To be notified. Exactly. They must have been here in the parish. How do we find them, Marie? Well, now just let me think. Are you sure you 
sure this is the right address? Absolutely. What are we doing here? Marie dug out Father Honecker's old appointment books from the attic. And there were two unusual places that he went around the same time of Andy Moore's adoption. One was a Lakeshore Drive doctor, and the other one was to meet the owner of this bar. Let's go see the Lakeshore Drive doctor. Uh, we're here now. We'll do this one first. Right. Sunday already? Hey, you don't want to use the restrooms. Trust me. <laughs> Got a penguin in my eye. Just been arrested. Am I doing it right? Seven's a better shot. The seven. Yes, yeah, quiet. You want to try it? Sister, I don't think you should. These gentlemen play for money. Father, I had no idea. Oh, yes, you did. 20 bucks a ball too much? Go ahead. What do you think? Easy money. Seven in the side. However, if you would like to make a donation to St. Michael's, it will be appreciated. It is tax deductible. Are you really a nun? Sister Stephanie of St. Michael's. I'd like you all to meet our pastor, Father Dowling. Look, I know this may sound a little strange, but uh, 22 years ago, my predecessor, Father Honecker, he had a meeting with the owner of this bar. Now, do any of you happen to know who that might be? Same guy owned this bar for 30 years. At the sign says Vinny. Vincent Pello. Vincent Pello. The biggest mob guy in Chicago. Well, then he's the one we ought to talk to. Come on. Are you sure this is the place? It's the only one in the book. Well, better wait here. I'd like to speak Nobody's with... Nobody's home. Vincent Pello. Have no future as a burglar. Besides, isn't this breaking and entering? 
It didn't break. I just entered. And look at these. Looks like Vincent Pella was a little slow opening his mail. Some of these letters go back a couple of months. You know that thug that opened the door? Yeah. He said nobody was home. But I think I saw Vincent Pella with an upstairs window. How do you know it was him? No, I don't. But it was somebody. I'd much rather talk to them than that thug. Frank, these are very dangerous people. Why don't we just go now and we'll come back another time, all right? Steve, no matter who Vincent Pello is or what he's done, he's still an old member of our parish. I'm in no danger here. We're going now. You go back to the car. I'll be fine. Come on. So just take a couple of minutes to go on. This may appear a bit odd to you, but well, I sort of came down here by accident. I'd like to see Vincent Pello. He's right behind you. Oh. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I knew he dropped out of sight, but I had no idea. Everyone thinks he's been in Sicily for the past three months. And says you're a priest. I expect you to treat this confession with confidence. How... How did he die? One morning after breakfast, my husband laid down, closed his eyes, and never opened them again. I got a permit for this. You here for a worthy cause, Father? Oh, no, no. No, I, I, I'm not here for a, a contribution. No? Uh, you own a... Well, that is, your husband owned a bar called Vinny's. Oh, yes. Vinny's first acquisition. I keep it mostly out of sentiment. Hmm. Well, uh, 22 years ago, my predecessor at St. Michael's, Father Honecker, had an appointment to meet with him there. 22 years? That's a long time. Do you know why he went there? Why are you so interested? Oh, well, uh, we're, we're sort of doing a biography on uh, Father Honecker just for the church records. Uh, uh, there's been some talk about possible nomination for sainthood. That was when my oldest son, Joe, got killed, shot down on the street. The police never found out who shot him. Father Honecker came around to give Vinnie the church's solace. Is that the only reason he met with him? Of course. It's a terrible thing to lose your only son. I'm sure it must be. Anything else? No. Well, <laughs> actually, uh, St. Michael's could use a contribution. I send a check. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, by the way, when was the last time you were in church? I can't remember. That's too long.
So, what's up? I think maybe I'm grasping at straws. Let's go home and get back to work. Do something about that. Excuse me, Father Frank, what are you doing? Thinking. Well, I hate to rush you, but uh, you have a church full of people waiting for you. Oh, Steve, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like I'm losing my grip here. Well, you, you gotta take it easy, Frank. I mean, you've been under a lot of pressure lately, you know? You know what it really is? I think I pursued this whole thing to let myself off the hook. So I wouldn't blame myself for what happened to Andy. Yeah, well, don't sell yourself short, Frank. I mean, your, your hunches have been pretty good in the past. Yeah. What's this? Uh, that's a video camera. Oh, I know that, but what's it doing here? I put it there. Where'd you get it? Uh, well, it belongs to uh, Larry Beekman's father. I borrowed it. Whatever for? Well, I told Larry's dad that I wanted to, uh, you know, tape some soccer practices, kind of a, a visual aid sort of thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice. By God's mercy, we who leave this church today in sorrow will be reunited in the joy of God's kingdom. Let us comfort one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. And now we will hear a few words from Andy's dear friend and partner, Mr. Charles Robinson. Andrew Gregory Moore and I grew up together here in Chicago. He was like my brother. They say opposites attract, and that was us. He was quiet, and I was loud. And he was a brain and an A student, and I was always in trouble. Andy Moore went on to prove to the world that he was an authentic mechanical genius. He could have invented anything. Missiles, rockets, new and terrifying weapons. But the gentle part of him you see in what he has left behind, toys toys for children, because he always felt he was one of them. And he always wanted to know who his real parents were, you know. I like to think he's with them now. Sister Stephanie, I cannot imagine what possessed you. During a funeral mass, what if someone had seen you? That's all we need is another complaint to Bishop McNee. He's ready to send us to some new foreign mission as it is. I just wanted to see if anybody interesting showed up. Turn it on. <laughs> Maria Pello. Yeah, she came late. She stayed just a minute. So what do you think? I think maybe we're not on a false trail after all. And maybe we're not finished yet. The Lakeshore Drive, Drive doctor. doctor, right. When you called, I checked my files. I could find the record of only one visit from your father, Hunnaker. Well, that's what struck me so odd. Dr. Sullivan is his regular doctor. Why did he come to you? You realize, Father, that my records are as privileged as your confessional. It's my contention that his meeting with you had something to do with the Andy Moore adoption, such as you being the doctor of the natural mother. Now, is it her identity you're trying to protect? You're asking a great deal, Father. It means a great deal, Doctor. Father Hunnaker came to see me about an obesity problem. He was embarrassed to go to his regular physician. That's why he consulted me. See for yourself. Doctor, 
I understand you trying to protect the privacy of your patient, but I knew Father Hunnaker, and he wasn't fat. And if my nephew, Phil Keegan, who's with the police, were to take an interest, well, I'm afraid the result would be much more public than if it were handled by me. Very well. It was the Moore adoption. The mother phoned me just a few weeks ago. She told me where she is now. The real mother? Yes, she was afraid. After that public scene at the Hall of Records, she didn't want some reporter hunting her down. She wanted to be sure that her secret was safe with me. I'll treat everything you tell me as privileged, which is more than you can expect from the police and the press. And you are the lesser of two evils, mm -hmm. aren't you? Well, I hadn't thought of myself quite like that. Catherine St. Urban, 2734 Kalmar Drive. Very good handwriting. We can when we must. Well, thank you very much. I hope she understands. Mm. Oh, I wonder, could I impose on you for a brief medical opinion? Not at all. Well, I have a touch of the navicular disease. My doctor's been prescribing phenylbutazone, and, well, do you think that's best? Absolutely. I wouldn't second-guess your regular doctor. Oh, thank you. Did he believe you were me? Sure, why not? You were smart to call us when you heard from the priest. I knew I'd never be able to lie to him. I, I, I'd be too nervous. So now it's taken care of. But, uh, but what if he comes back? What do I do then? Actually, it's more of a house. How's that? Well, this place is sort of a, a landmark. Really? <laughs> yeah? A landmark, huh? I'd like to see Catherine St. Urban, please. Who wants to see her? I'm Father Dowling. Just tell her Dr. Canfield sent us. Come on in. some coffee? Sure. Okay, I'll be right down. Oh, darling, that will make you comfortable. What? You don't have to go to any trouble. I... Oh, it's no trouble at all. Why, it's our pleasure. Oh. Yeah, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> this time, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, girls. Come on. Okay. Father, we're not open until tonight. They told me a priest wanted me. You're Catherine St. Urban? In the flesh. I'm here on business. So am I. 
I'm Frank Dowling. I succeeded Father Hunnaker at St. John's. I wanted to talk to you about Andy Moore, your son. I don't have a son. Connie Donahue, Mike Flanagan's girl. What? 1976, Flanagan knocks over the Trade Bank of Chicago. You and he disappear, and so does the money. You know, I have a feeling that the police would like to know where you are. Just what do you want? Andy Moore was your son. Yes. Where's Andy's natural father? He was the pimp who originally turned me out on the street. He disappeared when I got pregnant. I thought you might come to the funeral. I never knew the boy. Never really wanted to. That's all there is, Father. Well, thank you for seeing me. You've been a great help. He turned out really well, didn't he? My son. He was a fine young man. Oh, by the way, are you Catholic? Are you kidding? <laughs> I've never been happier in my life. Well, what about you? How are things for you here? It's OK. Kate's a good boss. But I get sick of it sometimes. You can always exchange a bad habit for this one, you know? It works for me. You want to talk about it, you call me sometime, all right? OK. I'll call you sometime. We're done here. Frank, she isn't the mother. I know. She's a good liar. When I said Father Hunnaker was at St. John's instead of St. Michael, she went right along with it. No, more than that. That girl, Jane, she told me Potter will put Catherine St. Urban in the life. She can't have kids. I suspected as much. You knew she was a liar before we even got here? For one thing, Dr. Canfield is a fake. A fake? I asked him if I should keep using phenylbutazone for my navicular disease. The wrong medicine. Oh, no, no. It's the right medicine for that disease which affects the navicular bone and the foot of horses. Human beings don't have that disease because they don't have that bone.
Bill supposed to be here? Yeah, there he is. Isn't this Dr. Canfield's building? Yes. Hey, Phil! Oh, hi, Steve. Bill, what's... Hello, Frank. What happened here? Some tenant took a header down the air shaft. It's uh, probably just an accident, but I'll have to write up a report. A Dr. Sidney Canfield? Yeah, how did you know that? It's been that kind of a day. Did you know that Paul Ordain has been meeting secretly with Maria Pello? No, I didn't know that. Well, you're not even curious as to why? Who knows, Frank? Maybe, uh, maybe he wants to get her to open up in front of his committee. Look, Frank, I've got real problems. Phil, I think Dr. Canfield delivered Andy Moore. Now, can you get me a peek at his medical records? Oh, now, come on, Frank. I can't do that. I, uh... Look, they're confidential. I deal in confidences every day. It's my specialty. No, I can't. All right, all right. By the way, when was your last confession? I'm not telling. You know what I was thinking? Mm. I could go back to Vinny's bar. I could go upstairs. I could look around. I could see if I come up with anything interesting. What do you think? Absolutely not. That's what I thought. Uh, Sergeant Keegan is quite right, Father. I am trying to cut a deal with Maria Pello. And if necessary, I'll get her immunity in exchange for her testimony. But why? Well, to stop all of these so-called accidents, for one thing, they're all members of the Pello family. Have you known Maria Pello long? Oh, we met a couple of times, usually outside of hearing rooms. <laughs> Did you know Vince? Oh, yeah. What about their son, Joey? Yeah, no. Why? Oh, it's nothing, really. <laughs> My father, <laughs> no secrets. Well, if I had a suspicious nature, I might think that you took an interest in me because of Andy Moore, and that your meeting with the Pellows was about him. See, I keep thinking that these deaths in the Pello family are somehow connected to Andy. Yes, actually, so did I. And frankly, that is why I took an interest in you. I just can't figure out how Andy relates to all of this. Well, if I find anything, and I mean anything at all, where I can see a connection to the boy, I'll let you know right away, Father, all right? Fine. Oh, is uh, Patricia at home? No, no, she's out for the afternoon. Oh, incidentally, Father, my meeting with the Pella is uh, strictly confidential between you and God's ear. He won't tell anyone. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Father. Patricia, I was just asking about you. I'd like to talk to you for a moment. About what? Uh, Patricia, could you come in here, please? I guess it'll have to wait. And may God's blessings be with all of us, his adopted sons and daughters. May he make us, wherever we go, faithful members of his church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God's blessings be with you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. And to you, too. Excuse me, Father Dowling. Oh, you here to confess? No, Presbyterian. Well, what can I do for you? I was wondering if you'd had any luck finding Andy's parents. Not yet. I've had an offer to sell the company. Well, what's that got to do with Andy's parents? They'd be entitled to Andy's 50%. And I'd really like to see that they get it. Do you think you'll sell? My heart's not in it anymore without him. Hmm. Any progress on that idea of yours that Andy's death wasn't a suicide? Not really. Can't imagine why anyone would hurt Andy. Let me know if you get a lead on the parents.
looking for Tony. Tony? Tony who? There ain't no Tony here. What's going on? Girl was upstairs. Who? I don't know. She got away. What was she doing? I don't know, Mr. Sloan. Describe her. Bishop McNee, how nice to see you again. I honestly wish it were good to see you, Frank. Is something wrong? Take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Uh, where did you get these? They were sent anonymously. Oh, well, I can explain, Bishop. You see, I was visiting a landmark. Uh, uh, Bordello. You what? You know, a house of ill repute. Potential converts. I don't want to hear about it. Frank, I've warned you before. Now I'm telling you. Stop. But, Bishop, I am on to something. I don't care. But whoever sent you these pictures is trying to stop me. Frank! Stop playing detective, or I'll remove you from the parish. Father uh, Frank, I got something. Bishop McNee, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were here. I'll no, just... Sister Stephanie, you needn't withdraw. Father Dowling and I have terminated our conversation. What was that all about? Very cute. Yes. A little blackmail, huh? So guess where I've been? Where? Do you remember that we saw Catherine St. Urban go into a door next to Vinny's bar? Well, they got an apartment upstairs, and I went there, and you're not going to believe what I found. Vinny's bar? Yeah. Are you trying to get yourself killed? Just, Those people... just wait, just look. This was a bullet. Now it's just this part and the powder. I don't understand. And the bottom of my bag is wet. Wet? Yeah, and I found this bullet in the freezer. Freezer? Ice. ice. <laughs> A bullet made of ice that kills and then disappears. Andy Moore. Yeah. Well, we don't know who did it or why. But at last, we know how it was done. Uncle Frank, I'm sorry, but I really can't deal with this right now. I, I've got the commissioner, the mayor, the senator on my back, and you're talking about frozen bullets. I, I'm sorry, but I can't deal with it, OK? Bullets aren't frozen. They're made of ice. Oh, that's much better. Now, please, go home. Book, Phil. In all your accidents, the bodies were mangled. So? So they weren't accidents. They were murders. The victims were all shot with bullets made of ice. So there'd be no trace? Yeah, just like Andy Moore. Bullets made of ice. Yeah. Yes. Where's the mob going to get something like that? Yeah. Uh, I'll be right there. Now the commissioner wants to see me. Now, wait a minute, Phil. There is something you can do. What? I need to know who was Dr. Canfield's maternity patients 22 years ago. Oh, now, look, I told you, I can't give you access to those medical records. No, but you can find out at which hospitals he was on staff. Andy Moore's mother was admitted to one of those hospitals. No. Uh. You won't give up on this, will you? No. Hello, sister. Hello. Can I help you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, you could. How's that? 
Oh, I'm intrigued by computers. You came to the right place. I don't remember seeing you around here before. Well, that's probably because I've never been around here before. I'm from St. Michael's. So, what can I do for you? Oh, well, I don't want to take up your time. I mean, you're obviously a very busy man. This thing does all the work, actually. Leon, I was telling Father Dowling the other day, we really should get a computer, you know, put all the parish records on it. Nice idea. Yeah, it is, but we're well, just between you and me. The Father's a little bit old-fashioned, you know, and he doesn't think that we can get all the records on one computer. You know, they go back 50 years or so. This model could handle everything you wanted. You really think so? Absolutely. I can access all the records of this hospital from the day it opened to this morning. Well, I find that a little hard to believe. Oh, I wouldn't lie to you, sister. Can you prove it? Sure. Okay. Well, call something up then from a uh, long time ago. Well, let's see. How about 22 years? Well, we could call up... Uh... The maternity records. Yeah. Sure, why not? In August. <laughs> August. August the 15th. <laughs> there you are. Look at that. That's amazing. Thanks. Don't you want the name of the make and the model for the father? Well, that's a Xenon X70 with multiple axis and a triad digital base, right? See ya. Mr. Dane. I heard you ran here every day. Yeah. Could we go somewhere and talk? I have another mile to go. Are you running to or away from something? What does that mean? Your father's a very powerful man, isn't he? Yes, he is. I imagine it must be hard to find a man to measure up to him. In what regard? Well, a man for yourself. I've managed. Well, two marriages and you return to your maiden name, his name? I have things to do, excuse me. Joey Pello. Did you love him? 22 years ago, you were really just a girl, weren't you? Must have been exciting, a mobster's son. Your father must have been furious when he found out you were pregnant, wasn't he? I was never pregnant. 22 years ago, you were admitted to Lake Memorial Hospital by Dr. Sidney Canfield. And that's where your son was born, and that's where your father made you put him up for adoption, and that's what this is all about, isn't it? What is any of this to you, really? I think someone killed your son, Andy Moore. And I don't know why, but somehow it has to do with your father and the Pello family. And you came into my confessional the other day, didn't you? Tell me I'm wrong, and I'll go away. Did I forget to pay the light bill again this month? No, you paid it. Well, would you mind checking the breaker? We might have blown a fuse. I'm on my way. Call him. Father Dowling? Yes? Get 
Dan, thank you for coming. Patricia, what are you doing here? I asked her to be here. Why? Because once and for all, I want the whole truth. Someone tried to kill me and my assistant last night, so maybe you'll be kind enough to supply the missing pieces. Come on, Patricia, we're we'll going. I think you'd better listen. Patricia! She's right, Senator. Have a seat, please. Uh, what is it? 22 years ago, Patricia was pregnant by Joey Pello and planned to marry him. But he was killed in a gang war. Your price for helping your daughter was that she put her child up for adoption and then never have anything more to do with it. But what I think happened, what nobody else knew, was that that child created the initial contact between you and the Pellows. I have no connection with them except the intention to put them all behind bars. Oh, I'll just bet that when you met the Pellows to arrange that secret adoption, that you suddenly all realized how valuable you could be to each other. And you've been secret partners ever since, haven't you? Right now, this massive investigation of yours is just a mere charade while Mrs. Pello eliminates the weak links in her organization. If they're ready to sing to you, she eliminates them. It's sort of like spring house cleaning. What it is is fantasy. I'm right, aren't Total I? Total fantasy. And because I was getting too close to the truth, one of them tried to have me killed last night. And because Andy Moore refused to give up learning the truth about his parents, Mrs. Pello had him killed. That's a lie. He was my grandson. Maria, for God's sake, what are you doing here? Hello, Patricia. Remember me? Yes. This priest got everything else right. He's a little too smart for his own good. But then he says, I killed Moore. 
You know me, Patricia. I haven't changed. Joe was my only son. Andy Moore was his only child. And mine. I was his grandmother. I'm not like this aristocrat here. My blood isn't blue and cold. It's hot and red, and it was in that boy's veins. I watched over him all his life. He never knew it. When that toy company needed capital to get started, I arranged it. He never met me, but I was always there. And I could never kill that boy. He was all that was left of Joe. Mrs. Pello, three of your enemies died recently in an accident. I know how they were killed. How? They were shot with bullets made of ice that melted and left no trace. And that's exactly the way Andy Moore died. No! I couldn't do that. Not to Joe's boy. Well, who else could have? Never mind, priest. It's over. You can't prove a thing. And there's nothing left to look for. You go public. We'll all deny this ever happened. We'll take care of the rest of this business. Ourselves. Patricia, we're leaving. Patricia. You know what you are, Father? You're someone who, from the moment he gets up in the morning until the moment he falls asleep, no one ever says no to. If I had said no to you then, I would have a son now. Go home, Senator. painful this must be for you. I'm truly sorry. Frank, what are you doing? Thinking. So what's going to happen? Father Frank? Of course. Maria Pello was involved in the toy company, and Andy Moore never knew it. So? So, let's go. People looking for Mr. Robinson? Yes, I'm Father Dowling, and this is Sister Stephanie. Hello. Steve. Well, he was here, but he left. He got a call from some woman and had to go meet her. Do you know where? He wrote it down. It's, it's up front. Give me a second. Thanks. Here's the address. Thanks, I appreciate it. This is my nephew Phil's phone number. Would you mind calling him and asking him to meet us there? It's an emergency. Sure, no problem. Thank you. Oh, uh, is the ice bullet project still on? No, it's done. You know about that, huh? I was Andy Moore's priest. Oh, that was all very hush-hush. Mr. Robinson handled the whole thing himself. He wouldn't even let us talk about it with Mr. Moore. Is that right? Yeah, it was the only defense contract we ever had. I don't even know what it was. Navy or something. But it's over now? Yeah. We are back to just toys. too much time back there. You mean I should go fast? Yes. So tell me what's going on. 
Is Robinson the killer? We try to keep him from getting killed. Both. Maria Pello undoubtedly got to know Robinson when she financed the toy company, and she turned the toy company into the mob's research and development arm. They developed those bullets, and Marie's been using them to get rid of her own enemies. But Robinson used one to kill Andy Moore. He's supposed to be away on vacation. I know. Well, so how did he do it? Why did he do it? I don't know the how, but the why is because when he sold the company, he didn't want Andy Moore to have 50%. It's a funny place to meet, Mrs. Pello. It's private. How come you killed your partner? Mrs. Pello, you're amazing. How'd you know that? A fellow told me. Did Moore find out about us? Was that it? No. No, of course not. I don't get it. Why did you kill him? I'm selling the company. If he dies, I get it all. You know how it is, Mrs. Pello. Therese and I like to live pretty well. The company's successful, but not that successful. Was Teresa in on it with you? Not her. She liked Andy. <laughs> she was my alibi. I was in Canada when Andy took the dive. Except she was taking classes. And I was off by myself on the slopes. And where I was was a chartered plane. Three hours, round trip. She never missed me. You knew he was going out there? I told him to do it. That was the beauty of the thing. Do it when I'm away so I can't be called to talk you in. Do it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon so your message will get on the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> it was perfect. He went out there like a lamb. OK. That's all. Slon. You better go back down and wait for Phil. What is it? Mrs. Pella, what's going on? Andy Moore was my grandson. Why else do you think I'd invest money with a scum like you? For the ice bullet. For the advancements we could make. No! You're gonna have a fall. Goodbye, Chuck. I hope you've got more than one of those bullets, Mrs. Pello and a good explanation as to why we both fell off this building. Out of the way, beast. This is family. No, it isn't. It's a matter for the law. What will the law do? Put him in prison? Yes! I got friends in the pen. It still comes out the same place. That's between you and your conscience. But above you is God and the law. And they both must judge this man. I will kill you, priest if you don't get out of my way. Freeze! Oh. Don't move! Let's go! Frank, what's going on here? Congratulations, nephew. You've done it again. I fell asleep. Well, I was up late last night, and I'm not used to that. What happened? We won! Was it spirit or fate? No, it was goaltending. Our new goalie! 
Steve? But you're a ringer. No, I'm not. Girls can play on the team as long as they're members of St. Michael's Parish. Where in the world does it say a nun can't play soccer? <laughs> told that somebody was Patricia. Father Dowling, I'm leaving Chicago this afternoon, and I wanted to see you before I go. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. We're having a celebration. We won a soccer game. It's a miracle. You're leaving the city? On my own. Hmm. I'm not daddy's little girl anymore, thanks to you. For what you did for me and what you tried to do for my son. Hmm. Buy some soccer balls, huh? That's an awful lot of soccer balls. Thank you. Give me your blessing, Father. You have it, my child. And I pray you find contentment. Or something. Goodbye. Bye-bye. It's hard to reconstruct the actual thought process. Uh, the important thing is the result. Uh, we do have organized crime figure Maria Pello in custody, and we expect to prove our case against her. In the strangest turn of events thus far, Senator Paul Urdain, whose crime subcommittee has been holding hearings in Chicago, has himself been linked with the notorious Pello family. Oh, well, all I can say is, um, we, uh, we do expect Senator Urdain to appear before the grand jury shortly. Mm. Police Commissioner Murphy was quoted as saying, we've come to expect this kind of brilliant detective work from young Phil Keegan. The young detective Phil's taking all the credit again. He's not taking it, they're pushing it on him. What's the poor boy to do? Are we celebrating here or not? Come on! are still mystified by the baffling disappearance of millionaire heiress Kathy Beauregard. In an extraordinary set of circumstances, Miss Beauregard disappeared from a locked room in her penthouse apartment. I was interested in that. I know. Yep. Yeah.